Hello my dear students. In this video we are going to study about electron distribution. Do you remember what is electron? Yes, electron is a negatively charged subatomic particle. And where it is found? It is found in the region around the nucleus. Now if we want to exactly describe where electron is found in the atom, we are in fact going to talk about electron distribution or electronic configuration. So we go ahead. Now we have to remember two facts. An orbital can have two electrons and the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in any shell is given by the formula 2n square. For the sake of convenience and making a trend of revision, I think this is my point number one. So because I am using the word shell here. You know the shells are the regions or the fixed path on which electron revolves around the nucleus. Suppose this is the nucleus. So the very first shell is given the principal quantum number 1. The next shells have the n value 2, 3 and many more. And I have to just put the value of n in this formula to get how many electrons can be accommodated or filled in any particular shell. The next thing, an orbital can have two electrons because the orbital is the region or it's the space around the nucleus where the probability of finding the electron is maximum more than almost 95 percent so we have to speak all details all information about the location and maybe some sort of its energy or its orientation or maybe it's a spin using all the quantum numbers so we go ahead now there are some rules. The very first rule is Aufbau principle. Aufbau is a German word that means building up. And it, this rule states that when electrons organize themselves in different energy shells or orbits, they occupy the lower energy shells at first and gradually make their way to the higher energy level. As any child when he starts his schooling, he is never admitted or admission in the higher classes. He has to go from the junior levels. So the very first level, then second level, then higher level gradually. Similarly, electrons build up or they make up the atom and they start filling the lower energy shells. Then they build up. To a higher shell. The next thing when we apply this we see the electrons are filling first 1s orbital. I remind you that this, this one is the principal quantum number and that is shell like this and these s, p, d and f are the subshells and how come you can draw this drawing? It's very easy you have to write them with an open structure then you have to draw the diagonals connecting you starting from 1s then comes 2s then comes the ton of 2p 3s and one by one different subshells are filled and don't you forget that the s suborbitals or subshell has only two electrons the p can have 6, the D's 10 and F's can be accommodated with 14 electrons in it. So practice it. The next is a very important N plus L rule. N is the principal quantum number and L is the as the mutual quantum number. Again you must know about the shell and about the subshell. Now in this case we see we have to fill up the electrons in any atomic structure and we have to calculate first its n plus l value. 
and in this case where n plus l is the same for two orbitals for example 2p and 3s now this 2 is the n and I remind you the s subshell has zero value p is 1 now you can calculate it yourself and if you are getting the same n plus l value then the value or the subshell which has lower le value of n will be filled first. Now you can read this slide again. Now I have using a chart for you which will help you in applying this n plus l rule. Now in this chart I have calculated the n plus l value of 1s. So I am getting 1 as the total answer. How come? The value of n is 1 here and the value of s subshell, the value of azimuthal quantum number l is 0. And in the next case, I am calculating, when I calculate the n plus l value of 2p, I get 2 plus 1, 3. And at the same time, when I see the n plus l value of 3s that is 3 again now the rule applies here that the subshell will be filled first which n number is smaller so 2p will be filled first then comes the turn of 3s the next is Pauli's exclusion principle it is again very interesting thing to know about the electrons position when I see this rule, it states that no two electrons in the same atom can have identical values for all four quantum numbers. In other words, more than two electrons cannot be filled in the same orbital. Like in the very first slide of this lecture, I use this, that any orbital can be filled with only two electrons. We cannot put more than two like three or four electrons cannot be filled in any orbital the second very important point two electrons in the same orbital must have opposite spins yes i am talking about the fourth quantum number which defines the spin of the electron as clockwise or anti-clockwise now when we apply this we can see that if we have the information or the quantum details of every electron in any atom we will be finding them if the value of n is same the value of l is same the value of magnetic quantum number is same then their spins cannot be same so i summarize again the Pauli's exclusion principle as no two electrons in any atom can be assigned with the same four quantum numbers. Now you can practice for more. The last is Hund's rule. Every electron in a subshell is singly occupied with one electron before any one orbital is doubly occupied and all the electrons is singly occupied orbitals having the same spin. The reason why Hans rule is very important because you need to know the ground state of any element then further we can determine about its excited state. So in which states the atom having its electron? Now we are going to see, suppose we have nitrogen. Nitrogen is an element with proton number 7. So there are 7 electrons to be accommodated. So following all the four rules, when I see the very first two electrons are filled in 1s. The next two, 2s. Now this is the case when I see the orientation of electrons in 1s and 2s. I have to remember that the shape of the s orbitals was sphere. So the electrons are equally found. But the fourth quantum number is different. Okay. Now I have subshell P. And P subshell has three orientations. 
one x-axis, the second y-axis, the third is z-axis. So I have to see that instead of filling the first x and y, I have to place electrons in three equal energy orbitals. These kind of orbitals which have equal energy are called as degenerate orbitals. So instead of pairing them, first I will be filling them in all available orbitals. So this is how the nitrogen's electron will be filling the P, 2PX, 2PY and 2PZ. Now this is the end of this lecture and I wish and I will advise you to apply these rules to assign the electron distribution or configuration. Now pick up any 10 elements from the periodic table and start writing the configuration as per these rules. Thank you. God bless you. Take care.